These sounds are ones we all recognize instantly. Noisy floors. Noises and the movements that often accompany them are the most common causes of complaints about floor construction. This APA program will show what causes noisy squeaky floors and explain how easy it is to reduce floor complaints by using proper construction techniques. APA is a non-profit trade association. Our member mills produce nearly 80% of the structural wood panel products made in the U.S. and Canada. One of APA's most important jobs is quality assurance. An APA trademark and a structural wood panel signifies that the manufacturer is subject to our rigorous quality auditing program. But quality products are only one part of quality construction. Proper installation is equally important. APA market development specialists answer a lot of questions in the field about how and why floor problems occur. Through its ongoing work with builders, APA has identified many of the common causes of floor callbacks and complaints. People say when they walk on the floor they hear a squeak, a popping, or a crackling sound. After examining a lot of these conditions, we can say most floor noises are the result of panels not securely fastened to the framing. In this program, we'll show you four simple ways to avoid complaints and callbacks brought on by floor noises. First, always choose the proper building materials. Space floor panels correctly, making sure to leave room for expansion. APA strongly recommends you install a glued floor system with panels nailed and glued to the floor framing and with all tongue and groove panel edges glued together as well. And use panels with the APA trademark. This is your assurance of high quality. The first thing you can do to avoid floor problems is to choose the correct building materials. For floor framing, select dry, dimensionally stable framing members. These can be properly dry dimension lumber, eye joists, or floor trusses. In many cases, glue lamb beams can be used for the primary floor girders. Their superior strength allows longer clear spans than sawn dimension lumber. Also, since glue lambs are manufactured from kiln-dried lumber, shrinkage and warping are minimized. Green lumber floor joists will change dimension as they dry. When this happens, the wood shrinks around the nail, leaving the head of the nail exposed. You may hear this referred to as nail popping. It often results in bumps under the finished flooring and causes the floor to squeak. As with glue lamps, I-beams are always dry and dimensionally stable and produce a very rigid subfloor. I-beams are also easy to handle because they are so lightweight for their size and strength. You must also select the correct floor panels for your specific job. APA structural panels are available as all veneer plywood, composite panels, and oriented strand board. The panels are manufactured in a variety of grades and thickness. Many APA panels used in floor construction are performance rated for the intended applications. The trademarks on APA performance rated panels include the recommended span ratings for floor or roof installation. Always select floor panels with a span rating that matches or exceeds the joist spacing of your floor system. The kind of floor covering you intend to use will help determine which floor panels to select. APA rated sturdy floor may be used if you plan to finish the floor with a pad and carpet. Sturdy floor is a performance rated panel that is subfloor and underlayment all in one. It is a good choice for single floor construction. 
Many APA-rated sturdy floor panels come with tongue and groove joints for extra stability. If square edge panels are used, the edges must be supported by blocking between the joists. Another option is to use APA-rated sheathing as a subfloor, covered with sanded underlayment. The underlayment's sanded face provides a smooth surface for tile or vinyl finish flooring. Always protect floor panels from physical damage and the weather before and during construction. Be especially careful to protect smooth panel faces and tongue and groove edges from damage. Once you have selected the proper flooring materials, you are ready to begin installing panels. An important step to ensure quality floor construction is to make certain you are starting with a level framing surface. If floor joists are not level, your finished floor will suffer. If there is any crown in the joist, it should face up. Shim the ends and interior joist supports if needed to prevent any movement. One way to avoid crowning is to use I-beams for floor supports. Since they are always straight and true, with no crown, a builder can be assured of a level, stable floor. Blocking, installed where the girders and I-beams intersect, maintains the alignment of the I-beams under load. Another important step is to use a glue-nailed floor system. Be sure to clean moisture and other debris off the joists before applying glue. Extensive APA testing shows that glue firmly secures panels to the joists and gives floors more stiffness than non-glued floors. Glued floors go down quickly using regular construction materials and techniques. For best results, use a high-quality construction adhesive. For a list of recommended glues, refer to the APA publication, Adhesives for Glued Floor Systems. Spread only enough glue to lay one or two panels at a time, so you can finish nailing or fastening before the glue sets up. Remember, warm weather will cause the glue to set faster. In cold weather, keep the adhesive cartridge warm so the glue will flow evenly. Apply a continuous bead of glue to the band joist and all framing members. On wide framing areas, apply two or more lines of glue. And be sure to bond all tongue and groove joints together by applying glue in the panel groove. On joist where panel ends come together, apply two lines of glue to assure each panel end is secure. It's extremely important to make sure you make a continuous line of glue along all joists. It should be about one quarter inch, just about the width of this pencil. If you leave even a small gap, say just a few inches, it can create problems. Let me show you what I mean. Obviously, this floor is making noise when I walk on it. If we look closer, we can see the panel move. If the panel is properly glued and fastened to the floor joist, there should be absolutely no space between the joist and the panel. However, in this home, as you'll be able to see with my business card, there is a space between the joist and the panel, and this card moves easily between the two. Every time you step on the floor in this spot, the panel moves up and down, rubbing against nearby nails, and that's what causes squeaking. When using tongue and groove panels, lay the first panel with the tongue side toward the wall. This will protect the tongue of the next panel when it is tapped into place. It is very important to leave space between each panel to let the panels expand with changes in moisture content. If they are butted tightly together, Expansion may cause buckling, making the floor uneven. APA recommends leaving 1 8 inch space at all edge and end joints. An 8-penny common nail is a handy gauge to check for proper spacing between panels. Always leave a 1 8 inch space at the tongue and groove joints, too. Be sure to finish nailing panels before the glue sets. Your APA Residential Design Construction Guide shows the correct nail size and spacing for your specific joist spacing and panel thickness. For glued floors, space the nails 12 inches apart along all supports. 
If you use nail-only construction, space the nails 6 inches apart along the support panel edges and 12 inches apart on the intermediate supports. APA recommends using hand tools to nail panels to the floor joists. If an automated air gun is used, it's a good idea to mark the location of floor framing on the panels. If you don't mark the locations and use the air gun carefully, this is what can happen. The nails miss the framing and you don't get a proper connection. Apply hand or foot pressure to make sure the panels are held tight against the joists when fastening. Without this pressure, the gun action may let the fastener pull the panel up and away from the joist. Again, be sure to complete nailing before the glue sets up. For more details on gluing and nailing, refer to the APA Residential Construction Guide or talk with your APA Market Development Specialist. As we said earlier, sanded underlayment should be used under tile, sheet vinyl, or other resilient flooring. Use APA rated sheathing or sturdy floor for the subfloor. When using underlayment, stand the panels on edge, separated slightly to allow plenty of air to circulate between them. Let them stand for at least 24 hours prior to installation. This will minimize the potential for panel buckling. If the floor has become wet during construction, it should be allowed to dry thoroughly before installing underlayment or the finished flooring. When installing underlayment, place the panels smooth side up immediately before installing the finished floor. For maximum stiffness, place the face grain of the underlayment across the supports. The end and edge joints of underlayment panels should be offset from joints in the subfloor panel. Underlayment fasteners should not penetrate the framing. Nail spacing and size will depend on the thickness of the underlayment. Nail along the edges and use a grid pattern to nail the interior of the panels. See APA's construction guide for specific recommendations. Make sure nails and fasteners are flush with the underlayment surface. As with all panels, the underlayment should be spaced at all end and edge joints. APA recommends leaving a 1 32nd inch space at the joints. APA research shows one of the main causes of nail pops is incorrect nailing of the underlayment. Let me show you what happens when it is nailed incorrectly. Nails in the underlayment hit the floor joist and they may eventually start to pop up. Nail pops occur because smaller nails like this one are only partially embedded in the joist or joist shrinkage occurs causing even larger nails to loosen. Nail pops can also be caused by movement at this joint. In summary, if you take proper steps during construction, you will ensure that your finished floor doesn't squeak. First, always select the materials best suited for the kind of floor you plan to build. Protect floor panels from damage and weather. Build with dry framing members and install a glue-nailed floor system. Glue and nail floor panels according to recommended guidelines. Space panels correctly. Use only panels with the APA trademark. To add extra quality and strength to the floor, APA recommends building up to Code Plus standards. The APA Code Plus program sets quality construction standards for roofs, walls, and floors. Code Plus requires building materials and installation practices that are above minimum code requirements and includes guidelines for proper spacing, gluing, and nailing of floor panels. Remember, the extra care and quality built into floors and the entire home translates into much more satisfied homeowners and for you, fewer callbacks and complaints.